Welcome to AC 24-7, I'm Aaron Dean. Title 42 is expiring. It's the policy put in place in 2020 to curb the spread of COVID-19 that gave the U.S. government power to swiftly expel migrants at the southern border. For days now, the number of migrants waiting to cross has been surging, challenging a humanitarian crisis that is already unfolding there. Gloria Pazmino is on the ground in El Paso, Texas with more. The U.S. is bracing for a surge of migrants where there's already a humanitarian crisis at the southern border. Camila is one of those migrants staying at a shelter in El Paso, Texas. She's just 15 years old and says she and her family fled from violence in their native Venezuela. Yo, a mí me alegra mucho estar aquí. Camila says she's always dreamed of coming to the U.S. She wants to go to school and wants to, quote, be someone in life. There are thousands more like Camila. The federal government estimates more than 150,000 migrants are waiting in shelters and on the streets in Mexican states that border the U.S., according to a source. Without Title 42 in place, migrants will either be removed from the U.S., detained, or released into the country while their cases make their way through immigration court. We have surged 24,000 Border Patrol agents and officers, thousands of troops, contractors, and over a thousand asylum officers and judges to see this through. Meanwhile, El Paso City officials are staffing emergency shelters and say the city is at a breaking point. We all know that the immigration process is broken. In a community like El Paso or anywhere in the Rio Grande Valley, they, we cannot continue for infinity. Pero no todos somos malos. Javier Sequera holds on to hope as he awaits his fate. He says he came to contribute to America, and he wants what's best for his family. In El Paso, Texas, I'm Gloria Pasmino. Survivors of the 2021 Tulsa Race Massacre are hoping that their lawsuit for reparations can move forward. A hearing was held at the Tulsa County Courthouse the same day that the one of the three known survivors turned 109. Viola Fletcher was honored on the steps of the courthouse ahead of the hearing. She was seven years old when the angry white mob marched onto the city's Greenwood District, torching homes and businesses and killing hundreds of black people. Fletcher is part of the Justice for Greenwood Foundation, which is suing the city of Tulsa and the the county and the state military department. The judge said that she would issue a ruling in about a week. The number of people filing initial unemployment claims has reached its highest point in nearly two years. There were 264,000 first-time claims in the first week of May, up 2,200 from the week before, according to the Labor Department. That's the highest number since late October of 2021. It's also about 10,000 more than economists were expecting. Weekly unemployment claims have been trending up in a sign that the U.S. labor market market is softening. On January 31st, 2020, COVID-19 was declared a public health emergency in the U.S. The Advocate Channel's John Lawrence reports that the Biden White House is not going to renew that declaration a 14th time and will let it expire. For more than three years, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected aspects of everyday life for people worldwide. The United States got hit particularly hard by this pandemic. There's all sorts of reasons for that. But one of the big ones is that we were not very healthy going into this pandemic. But the disease's grip on the globe is going away as the Biden White House is allowing the COVID public health emergency to expire Thursday. This comes as COVID-19 weekly cases and hospitalizations are down drastically from previous years. I think for, for some people, this is going to seem very arbitrary and accelerated that the, the emergency part of this pandemic is coming to an end. For other people, they're going to say, hey, look, months ago, maybe even a year ago, I was sort of through this. While this is a milestone moment, health officials, including CNN's chief medical correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, say COVID-19 was still responsible for around 1,100 weekly deaths in the U.S. at the end of last month. That's about 54, 55,000 a year that would die if those numbers stayed the same, which is basically a really bad flu season. We could do better but that's where we are right now. But Gupta says the U.S., and the world for that matter, 
has tools to fight the virus. There's no reason anyone should die of this disease anymore. We have the technology to prevent that from happening. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Breast cancer is the second most common cancer among women in the US. Now, a new proposal would have women getting mammograms at a younger age. The US Preventative Services Task Force has proposed that all women at average risk of the disease should be screened every other year starting at age 40. The draft recommendation comes a few weeks after a study in the journal JAMA Network Open found that the rate of breast cancer deaths among black women in their 40s was 27 per 100,000 compared to 15 deaths per 100,000 in white women. The updates would not apply to those at an increased risk of breast cancer who may already have been encouraged to screen at 40 or earlier. And the EPA is proposing a new set of climate rules that would compel nearly all U.S. power plants that generate electricity to slash fossil fuel emissions. According to the new rules, existing and new power plants that run on coal and natural gas would need to be outfitted with carbon capture technology. They also have the option to add clean hydrogen fuel to reduce their emissions. The EPA estimates that these rules would cut about 600 and 17 million metric tons of carbon pollution by 2042. May is Mental Health Awareness Month and the National Institutes of Health estimate one in five adults live with mental illness in the U.S. Health experts say now is a good time to prioritize self-care and take time to recharge. Mandy Gaither has more on how you can do that. It's often the last thing we think about. Taking care of ourselves, focusing on our mental well-being is a critical part of our overall health. We kind of tack it on at the end of the day or it's just one more thing to do. Um, but self-care is really important. Psychiatrist Jennifer Zumariga with El Camino Health says there are many types of self-care, but she asks her patients to focus on three of them. First, physical, that means getting exercise and an adequate amount of sleep, as well as eating right. Research shows that getting regular meals that are balanced and good, and even some fun foods, um, you know, enjoying those, that's really very important, as well as hydrating. Next is the emotional aspect of self-care. That's being mindful, maybe meditating, or doing breathing techniques, or journaling. But she says it's also about practicing practicing positivity. I always want to talk about really practicing gratitude and reminding ourselves of the things that we are grateful for that we have in our lives. Finally, the social aspect of mental health. When the world shut down during the pandemic, many became isolated. Zumariga says it's critical to have relationships with others. Really reaching out to family members and friends and um, really trying to build those friendships and get support from other people is going to be very important for us um, and our mental health and self-care. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Well, one way I like to prioritize my self-care and mental health is by talking about the Queen Bee. That's right, I'm talking about Beyonce, the Queen has arrived. Queen B, who kicked off her Renaissance World Tour in Sweden at the Friends Arena. So this is the country's largest arena, of course. And guess what? She broke the internet again. So here are my takes on this. The outfits were stunning. The stage setup, stunning. And the new dance routines, stun and ing. It had me heated and truly proves that she is that girl and always will be. Well, thank you so much for joining us for AC247. For more, go to theadvocatechannel.com and subscribe to the Advocate Channel YouTube page. For AC247, I'm Erin Dean.